Hey everybody! Uh, this next tutorial will be how to make a face um, in pyrography. Uh, this will be the way I usually do it. Uh, this is Matilda Bernmark. She's a model, a young model. She's very beautiful. And let's try to, to make this work. Um, I also want to uh, say something to my Portuguese and Brazilian subscribers em uh, português uh, este tutorial mais uma vez uh, eu escolhi falar em inglês uh, pela mesma razão que já vos disse a maior parte dos subscritores uh, tem como língua o inglês uh, no entanto eu vou tentar utilizar as legendas automáticas espero que funcione se não funcionar eu mesmo uh, colocarei legendas no vídeo de qualquer forma uh, prometo-vos que o próximo tutorial uh, falado e com o passo a passo será em português uh, portanto já fica aqui a promessa um, espero que não fiquem aborrecidos comigo e pronto, era isto que vos queria dizer. So for this tutorial, um, I will be using uh, this uh, paper I found in a in a store next door. Um, it's a, a paper for acrylic painting. It has no texture. Uh, I will put the um, the brand. Uh, on the video description uh, as in the other tutorial, the Leary I have already uh, two prints one to stay as it is, uh, clean and the other one uh, to draw the lines uh, in the paper uh, so let's start by drawing the lines I already have the piece of paper I want for the tutorial. Uh, I al already tried this once and it turned out uh, uh, considerably good. Uh, it was just for fun. It was nothing more than that. Um, I will secure the paper and the print with some tape. Don't hold it too tight or when you take it off it will damage the paper one of the secrets to to make this work is uh, not to make too much lines because when you burn on top of them uh, they won't disappear completely and it will show so if you make lines in a, a bright area uh, they will show uh, and it's hard to take them uh, you can use a knife or a rubber or, but it won't uh, you won't be able to take them completely so it won't be good um, so let's use as few lines as we can and light lines just so you won't get lost in the drawing uh, we will make the lines on the darker areas um, so that if you burn, uh, if you burn them, it won't show. So as light as you can, and uh, if you can in the darker areas only. I am using uh, carbon paper to trace the lines. It's what I have here, and it works. So. As I told you in the other tutorial, I use a, a red pen so that I can see where I've already traced and what's missing. So let's start tracing the, the face to the paper.
Before we start, I want to show you what I was talking about, the different intensities of the, the lines. This is a very, very light line, which I erased a little bit. This is a medium and this is a very dark line. Uh, I have my razor tip on temperature 6. Um, when you burn over it, you see it shows the line if it's a light burn the line won't disappear you can see So for faces you have to use very very light lines. If you make them very dark in light places it will show and if you try to erase them they will they won't erase everything it will still show as you can see you can erase a part of it but it will still show so very very light lines all right Now, before we start, I want to lighten some lines. For, for instance, this one is a very bright area. And if you leave it this way, it will show. So let's erase a little bit. Just to keep the shape of the face, but not show the line too much. This is the same. It must be very, very light. Try to keep them as light as possible and few lines as possible also. As I've told you. You can still see the shape of the eyebrows, but the lines are lighter. Alright, I think these ones can stay. And we can now start burning. I also chose this size of paper and this size of, of uh, project <clears throat> because the, to fill the dark areas in a, a big uh, project uh, it's very hard um, and sometimes very frustrating so my advice is to start with a smaller project um, just to to see how this works to try the tips the the intensity the temperature uh, and then move on to a bigger project because as you know the tips aren't very big and it takes very very much time to fill in the the various shades of of uh, darker areas and lighter areas so start with a, a small project first uh, just to get used to it and then move on to a bigger project as uh, in all the other projects uh, wood or paper uh, keep a scrap paper to test the tip before you start burning 
so that you don't burn uh, dark areas where you shouldn't burn so always keep this to test the tip before start burning and of course uh, put something uh, behind the paper something that doesn't melt something hard um, so you can work uh, securely so let's start burning I always start um, in dark areas uh, so that uh, if the temperature is too high or I don't know if something happens uh, it will not show because it's a dark area uh, and I also like to start with the eyes uh, it gives the, the portrait character so this is in uh, temperature five and a half in my razor tip machine always test your tip, don't forget so that you don't have any surprise with the temperature on one hand um, the small size project is better because it's uh, easier to to make and fill in the, the dark areas on the other hand the details are uh, harder to make you won't be able to make so many details as you would like to or want to but I think it's better this way to start Don't forget you have uh, different lengths of hair. Uh, I'm used to to use the shading tip to do almost everything, but if you're more comfortable with the writing nib, you can use it here. I will also put this image on my blog you can save it to your computer or just uh, make uh, a search on Google uh, for Matilda Burnmark and you will have access to this image I'm sure well not that we have our eyes the darker areas are built we can start pulling to the brighter areas from dark to bright Don't forget to always look at your reference photo. I'm still using temperature five and a half, but I think I'm going to set it on four and a half so that the transition is not so hard. So it's four and a half now for the temperature.
The light on this photo is all on the left side, on our left side. So uh, all this area uh, is brighter than the one on the right side. So don't exaggerate on the darks. Once you put the eyelashes in it will have a much better look and everything will come together, these darker areas that look too dark will come together. Faces are a very slow process because they have to to be smooth and have volume so you have to be patient let's change tips I'm changing changing to the writing nib so I can do the eyelashes <coughs> and some details in the eye I'm trying my tip to see what temperature I should use in the scrap paper I think 4 is enough so I'm using temperature 4 on the razor tip don't forget to leave the the shine on the eye that little white dot Now the eyelashes always they don't all go the same way and they go from from this point of view inside the eye. So She has very long eyelashes and lots of them. But don't fill in all the space, leave some space unfilled between the eyelashes or it will look too much and will look fake. As you approach the corner of the eye, you can see that you have almost no eyelashes here. We can make one or two. But they are smaller and you almost don't have them. Inside the eye, don't forget. You see it all comes together with the eyelashes. Let's darken this space here. Give some texture to the eye. I usually make these these lines, one shorter, the other one's longer. It's not even. This one is brighter than the other one, so keep them very light. I'm changing to the shader spoon again 
and temperature 5. Let's leave this area for now and let's move on to the nose. The dark areas of the nose. Don't forget it's all, it's all about light and shadow. Uh, that's what gives volume and shape to the face. So keep looking at your reference photo constantly so that you make as few mistakes as possible. We can now join the nose and the eye. This area is much darker than it was, so I'm darkening this area here, trying to make it look smooth. Now let's move on to the lips. I like to jump between motives uh, and I recommend that you take some time uh, once in a while, uh, have a coffee or something because when you go back you see s some mistakes you didn't see the first time or things you've missed or something and I also don't like to stay in, in the same in the same thing uh, much time uh, because I get tired uh, and I actually don't see what's missing and I like to, to jump and go back again uh, and finish what I've started now we are doing uh, the darker areas and for the lips I think I'll smooth this line a little bit I think it's fine the lips have this specific texture uh, they are like uh, they have stripes they are wavy and uh, have these little cracks in them so uh, they always have must have this these vertical stripes. Um, so let's start by making the center of the lips. I'm using temperature five.
to make the darker area and then we go from there we start pulling down because this is a, a small project you, you won't have uh, so much detail as you would in a big project so don't worry also leave some whites because the, the lips always have this glossy look and if you burn all the area it won't have that look This is a bright area, so don't exaggerate. Keep it light. The curve of the stripes um, here is round to keep the lips shape. Also lighten this line here. I'm using this uh, rubber. There are lots of rubbers, vinylic rubbers. Uh, like this, like bread I'm using this one it's less aggressive to the paper don't forget the glossy look so keep this center area white Now the upper lip is much more lighter On the right side it's darker because the light is on the left side Don't forget that the stripes must be a little round to keep the shape of the lip So now that we've got the eyes, a little bit of the nose and the lips, let's go back to the nose. Uh, the nose must be very, very soft, so I'll put the temperature in four and a half to build the nose. The nose is all about shadows and light. It has no hard shape. It must be built very softly. It also has this uh, very, very light area in here and a little bit in here. So let's try to leave that w uh, really white.
I'll go ahead and put it, the temperature back to 5. If you're not comfortable with uh, the temperature in 5, you can put it in 4.5. Take your time, don't don't rush this because it will pay off when you finish. Let's build a little more face on the right side, it's a darker side. The face also has this uh, light area here, so we're gonna build these darker areas and leave this part white. So it comes from the lip, from the lip up. If this was a big project, this would take a lot of time to keep it soft and smooth, smooth transitions. I think we should also leave this area much lighter or even probably white to give lightness to the, the burning. Let's try it. Keep pushing a little bit from here, a little bit from there and build the dark areas because you have the cheek here and it's always lighter because it takes light from above I usually don't don't turn the paper so you can see better because I usually speed up the videos and if I keep turning the paper one side, the other side, it's harder to watch and to follow. But you can turn the paper if you if you want. I think I will increase the temperature a little bit to five and a half. Don't make much pressure on the tip. use uh, fast and light strokes so you don't get these really dark areas burnt areas in the middle of the the burning don't forget the light area here
I think I already made a mistake here because the temperature was probably too high and I burnt a little more than I wanted I'll try to erase it later so let's leave this for now and let's move on to these dark areas to have some more contrast then we can see if the face needs more burning or not <clears throat> it's really dark so in this part here it begins to have some texture so you can use the tip of the shading spoon to add some texture to the, the hair here but keep it really dark near the neck so it creates contrast I'm still using temperature five and a half for this This is a little blurry area, so don't make it too sharp. Now let's go back to the neck. Don't forget to try your tip on a piece of paper before you start burning this is also a really dark area we have these two lines, I don't know if you can see them these are for these two dark areas so let's try to make them Pulling from the dark area to the lighter area. These areas are also a little blurry and smooth, so use the, the base of the spoon to make them. If you use the tip, they will be very too sharp. All this area is in the shade, so it will be darker. Also, have to make this transition smooth. It's not so bright. Let's build this darker area from the darker area here to the, the brighter.
in here because it's darker you can use slower strokes and a little bit more pressure on the tip, not too much let's move on to this area here it's this part of the neck it's also a darker area let's try to make it try the tip on the scrap paper first so you won't burn too much As you go lighter, go into um, faster and lighter strokes. Let's move to this darker area also. I think I'll smooth a little bit the lines. They are very dark. Even for a dark area. So it won't show. Okay. Use the whole spoon. Let's move to the other side. And try to make this area here that is darker. Now let's move on to the shape of the the neck. This is a light area. <coughs> you can use the tip of the spoon because it's not a blurry area and it gives the shape of the neck. It also defines the rest of the face uh, I'm using I'm still using the five and a half temperature but for this uh, I think you better set it to five. I'm keeping it at five and a half so I can go a little faster but if you if you're doing this for the first time for example set it to five it's better because this is not a really dark area uh, and it can you can burn more than you need to so decrease a little bit
I think I will also decrease the temperature. I set it to 5 now. Now for this side of the face, this side is, is very light uh, and we also have a completely white area here near the ear. So we'll just make the contour first and then let's see. I'm using temperature 4 and a half. Don't forget to try your tip on the scrap paper first. This part also has a light area. This must be very light, so let's pull a little bit into the face, but not too much. I should have lightened this trace here. Now the earrings are very dark. Use the tip of the shading spoon to make them. I'm using quick light strokes for this because it's light we have the cheek here let's leave this as is and let's move on to the darker areas of the hair I'm still using temperature four and a half. I'm using the tip of the shader spoon. Don't forget to see the direction of the hair so it won't look fake. Keep looking at your reference photo to see the dark areas and also the direction of the hair. It's a little bit hard to keep the paper on the same position, but uh, I know it's better for you to watch and follow, so if you want to to put the paper in in other direction feel free to do it it may be easier I'm not doing it because it's more easy for you to watch and follow what I'm doing A writing nib is probably better for this. Um, I'm just used to, to work almost everything with a shading spoon, so you should probably use the writing nib for this. It's easier. Let's change tip.
don't forget that because the um, the writing nib is thinner you must lower the temperature I've set mine to 4 now and let's see what happens I think I'll put it in 4.5 These lines uh, we've drawn um, give you the direction of the hair and help you to keep the, the hair in the right direction and to see the transitions when the hair changes direction. Also these light and dark areas give the hair texture so you don't have to fill all the spaces to make it look good the hair has this shine Don't make much pressure on the writing nib or you'll damage the paper. Keep following the direction of the lines. <clears throat> As you probably noticed at the beginning of the video, my reference photo has no ending here so I'm trying to fix that I'm trying that it doesn't show that much that it has no ending it probably must be a little more round more hair here You can fix that later by filling the space, always following the hair direction. As we proceed to the right, the hair is darker because it's in the shade, so you'll have darker areas and few lighter areas
for these darker strokes it's better not to raise the temperature instead make slower strokes keep the tip in touch with the paper for a longer time but not in the same place of course keep moving the tip but slower don't forget that you don't have to draw every single hair you just have to make the the hair movement and direction these light areas it's what gives it shape and texture so don't worry let's change tips again let's go back to the shader spoon because this is a really dark area I'm using temperature 5 now Now we must give some texture, some volume to the forehead. Don't forget that everything in the face must be very smooth, so take your time. As you blend the face with the hair, 
you can also darken the darker areas of the hair to give it more texture and more volume and to take away some imperfections of the writing nib Let's do this also on the left side a little bit because it has much more light. Well, now that you have all areas very defined, you can add more detail uh, or darker, darken some areas. Uh, I, I will leave this one as it is, or it would be a never-ending tutorial. So... Mm, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, and I hope uh, you can make a face uh, more easier.